I was a terrible student at school, but I was efficient. So efficient, in fact, that I actually never ended up reading any of my assigned readings. I remember in my final year of high school, I got assigned the book Emma by Jane Austen. Now, due to my sheer laziness, I never actually got past the fourth page. English just really wasn't for me. So what I ended up doing is falling back on my good old friend Cliff Notes. I read a summary of the entire book and then ended up making my own summary from that. Now, this whole process would have been a hell of a lot easier if I had the model we're going to be describing and taking a look at in this video. So that brings us to the model. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Pegasus model for abstractive summarization. Now, you're probably thinking, Nick, what the hell is abstractive summarization? Well, abstractive summarization aims to do exactly that. It aims to take a body of text and summarize it into a shorter version. In this particular case, when we are talking about abstractive summarization, it's actually generating new sentences. So it's not just looking at a body of text and extracting the most important one like extractive summarization does. It's actually looking at the body of text and trying to generate an abstract summary of that. So it's actually generating a new sentence. Now, the model that we're going to be taking a look at is the Pegasus model trained by a team which was supported by the Data Science Institute, the Imperial College in London, as well as Google. Now, there's a whole bunch of use cases for abstractive summarization. Summarizing Emma is probably one of them, but there are a whole heap of others. Say you wanted to read a bunch of newspapers faster, you could do that. In fact, the Pegasus model is actually being trained on a whole bunch of articles from CNN as well as BBC. You could also summarize Reddit posts or Reddit threads. In this case, Pegasus has actually been trained on that as well. In fact, one of my favorite use cases is the ability to use the Pegasus model to summarize scientific journals. Again, something which has been done using the PubMed article. Now, the Pegasus model is described in a paper called Pegasus, free training with extracted gap sentences for abstractive summarization. It is built using a transformer encoder decoder architecture with the encoder outputting mass tokens and the decoder generating gap sentences. The second bit in this particular case is the bit that we're interested in. However, the research team output the mass tokens so that they would still be able to evaluate the model against a range of standard NLP benchmarks. This model differs from traditional GSG models in that it was pre-trained on existing gap sentences from the body of text. The researchers extracted specific sentences from the corpus and used those as the pre-training objective. This was done in the aim of producing more robust generated summaries. Now, in this video, we're going to do a little bit of a crash course on Pegasus. Let's take a deeper look as to what we'll be going through. So in this video, we're first up going to start out by installing the dependencies to be able to use the Pegasus model. And we're specifically going to be doing that through a library called Hugging Face Transformers. Then what we're going to do is we're going to import and configure the model. So this will basically download the model and get it ready so we can actually perform some attractive summarization. And then on step three, we're going to do exactly that. So we'll take a bunch of different types of text and we'll actually pass it through to our Pegasus model and see how it actually goes about performing some abstractive summarization. Now, in terms of how this works, first up, what we'll do is we'll install PyTorch and Transformers. So PyTorch is going to be the underlying deep learning model that powers the Pegasus model. Then we're going to download the Google Pegasus XSum model. So this is actually being trained on a whole bunch of BBC articles. So we'll be able to leverage that, but I'll show you where to access the other models as well if you want to do that. And then what we're going to do is wrap it up and pass through a body of text and have it summarized. So we'll actually grab some Wikipedia articles, pass it through to our Pegasus model, and you'll say it generate a shortened summarized version of that. And it will be an abstract summary. So it's not just a sentence which is existing within that existing body of text. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty, guys. So in order to go on ahead and use Pegasus, there's going to be three things that we need to go on ahead and do. So first up, what we're going to do is install our dependencies. And these are namely going to be PyTorch and Hugging Face Transformers. Then what we're going to do is we're going to import and load those models. And then what we're going to do is perform our abstractive summarization. So I think this is so powerful, right? So say, for example, you wanted to go and summarize a block of text and maybe pass it through to a newsletter. This would definitely be the pipeline that you want to take a look at. Okay. So let's go on ahead and first up install our dependencies. Now, the first dependency that we're going to need is PyTorch. So in order to grab PyTorch, what you can do is navigate to pytorch.org. And then all you need to do is go and hit install. 
and you'll be able to install it. So if we scroll on down, the build that we're going to choose is the long-term stable one. And then we're going to choose our operating system. So let me zoom in on this so you can see it a little bit better. So we've got our, our version that we want or what build we want, what OS we're using. In this case, we're using Windows. We're going to install it using pip and we're going to be installing it for Python. And in this case, I've got CUDA 11 on my machine. If you don't have a CUDA implementation or if you're not running on a GPU, perfectly fine. You can still go on ahead and do this. Just choose the CPU version. Um, if you're running on a, oh, it keeps scrolling on there. If you're running on Colab, then I believe it's going to be CUDA 11 as well. So let's go on ahead and copy this. And to install it, all we need to do is type in exclamation mark and then paste that in. And I'm just going to get rid of the PIP3 or just the three from PIP3. And if we go on ahead and run this, this is going to go on ahead and install our PyTorch implementation. So that ran pretty quick because I already had it installed. But you can see that first up, what you need to do is install PyTorch. So let's add a little comment there. Install PyTorch. And then the next thing that we need to do is go on ahead and install Hugging Face Transformers. So in order to do that, we just need to type in pip install transformers and hit shift enter. And again, I've got that pre-installed, so it went pretty quick, but all you need to do if you're installing it for the first time, let's add a comment, install transformers. All you need to do is type in exclamation mark pip install transformers. Now you're probably thinking, Nick, why do I need transformers? It's like, aren't we using Pegasus? Well, the implementation of Pegasus that we're going to be using is through Hugging Face. So Hugging Face is an awesome natural language processing company that gives out a whole bunch of open source natural language processing models that you can go on ahead and use. And it just so happens that the Google Pegasus models are available on there. So you can see that we've got Pegasus XSum, Pegasus Large, Pegasus CNN Daily Mail. So these, each of these different models are models that are trained on different data sets. So you can actually see that there's a whole bunch of different ones that we're able to use. We're going to use the XSum model because that's the most popular and that's the one that I found pretty good results on. So if we actually step into this, what you can actually do is see a whole bunch of information about the model, a um, whole bunch of documentation about how it was built. But again, I'll link to the formal paper inside of the description below so you can see that as well. Cool. So we are going to be using this model. Now let's go on ahead and do that. So we have now completed step zero. What we now need to do is go on ahead and import and load our model. Let's give ourselves a little bit of extra room. So I'm just going to add some additional cells. And what we're going to do now is import and load the model. So we're going to first up import some dependencies and then bring it in. So let's go on ahead and import our dependencies first up. Okay, so those are our main dependencies now imported. So I've gone and written one line of code there. So this is importing dependencies from transformers. So let's take a look at what we wrote there. So I wrote from transformers import Pegasus for conditional generation. And each one of those has a capital, right? So it's in camel case, comma, Pegasus tokenizer. So we've actually imported two new classes. We've imported this one, which is Pegasus for conditional generation and the tokenizer as well. So what we've actually gone and brought in is two separate things. The tokenizer is going to allow us to convert our sentences into a set of tokens. So think of this as a set of number representations for our sentences. So rather than passing through the word, um, I don't know, iPhone, it's going to assign a unique identifier for that specific word, which allows us to pass it to our deep learning model. So this is the process of tokenization. Then what we also have brought in is this Pegasus for conditional generation class. This is actually what's going to allow us to use the model. So this is going to be the holder of our specific deep learning model. So when we go and instantiate them, we're going to instantiate our tokenizer and we're going to set up our model as well. So what we're going ahead and do is exactly that now. So let's create our tokenizer and our model. So we're going to create our tokenizer. So that is our tokenizer now imported. So what we've gone and written there is tokenizer equals Pegasus tokenizer. So this class from up here, 
And then we've gone and used the from pre-trained method to load up an existing model. So this is going to be what allows us to leverage the Pegasus XSum model. So in this case, this is the exact model that we're going and using. So Google forward slash Pegasus dash XSum. Now, because I've gone and used this model before, it sort of skipped through the downloading because it's already pre-downloaded. When you do this for the first time, it's actually going to go on ahead and download the model. I think it's around about two-ish gigabytes. So just be mindful that you've got enough disk space to hold that as well. If you wanted to go and use different Pegasus models, you could as well. All you need to do is pass through the name. So you can see that this one here is called Pegasus forward slash large. If you wanted to load this model, all you need to do is replace that in here and replace it in the same place when we instantiate our model. You'll see that in a sec. Um, so again, you can use a whole bunch of different models if you wanted to. Let's create our model now. So create our model. Let's actually load models, probably a better description for what we're doing. So we're loading a tokenizer uh, and we're loading our model. So let's load our model now. Cool. So that is our model now loaded. So what I've gone and written there is model equals Pegasus for conditional text of oh, Pegasus for conditional generation, which is this over here. And then again, we've gone and used the from pre-trained method. So similar to what we used over here to go up and load an existing model. In this case, because I already had it pre-downloaded, it's already downloaded. So it didn't need to go and download it again. So it's loaded pretty fast. And then I'm going to pass through the model that I want to use. So in this case, we're using the Google forward slash Pegasus dash X sub model. So again, exactly the same as what we've gone and passed through to our tokenizer. So all up to import and load our models. We've gone and written three different lines of code. So first up, we've imported our dependencies from transformers. We've then gone and loaded up our tokenizer. And then last but not least, we've gone and loaded up our model. Now what we can actually go on ahead and do is actually perform some abstractive summarization. So let's go on ahead and do this. Now, first up, what we need to do is grab some text that we want to summarize. So we're going to create a new variable called text, and we're going to create three sets of quotes so we can just include it over multiple lines. I think if we go and grab Python from Wikipedia, this is a great example. So if we go to the Python Wikipedia page, and let's say we copy uh, this block of text. What we can go on ahead and do is paste it in there and try it out. So that's our text that we're going to try to summarize. Now, again, you could throw in whatever you wanted into here. So if you wanted to throw in, um, I don't know, like a abstract from a research paper, you could do that as well. In fact, we'll probably try that out. In this case, what we've gone and done is we've just gone and grabbed some text from Wikipedia and we'll try to create a summarized version of that. Let's get rid of that. So let's go on ahead and first up, what we're going to do is convert this to token. So remember we said that we loaded in our tokenizer up here. What we first need to do is convert this text into its token representation. So this is exactly what we're going to do now. So create tokens. And remember our tokens are a number representation. Let me bring this up a little higher so we can see it. Number representation of our text. So let's go on ahead and do it. Okay, so those are our tokens now generated. So if we go and take a look at our tokens, you can see that we've got a whole bunch of different tokens down there. Now, let me explain what it is that we've got there or what we've actually gone and done. So what I've gone and written is tokens equals tokenizer. And this is using our tokenizer that we created up here. And then to that, we're passing through our body of text, which is what we had over here. So you can see that that is our first positional argument there. And then we've gone and passed through a number of keyword parameters. So specifically, we've specified that we want truncation. And this basically means that it's going to shorten our text to make sure that it's of an appropriate length to be able to pass it through to our model, because there are limits as to how much you can pass through to the model. Then we're going and specifying that we want our padding to be as long as possible. So we set padding equal to longest. And then we've gone and specified that we want to return PyTorch tensors. So return underscore tensors, and we've set that to PT for PyTorch. So all up, it's this one line here to create these tokens. And then you can actually see the token representation of our body of text. So basically what we're saying is that all of this here is represented as these numbers to be able to pass it through to our Pegasus model. Pretty cool, right? 
So let's take a look at that line again. So I've written tokens equals tokenizer, pass through our text as our positional argument, specified truncation equals true, specified padding equals longest, and specified return tenses as PyTorch, which gives us these tokens over here. Now, what we need to do now is actually go and try to summarize this. So let's go on ahead and do that. Okay, so that looks like it's gone and successfully generated a summary. So what I've written is summary equals model dot generate. And then what we're doing is we're unpacking all the stuff that we've got inside of token. So we've specified uh, asterisk, asterisk token. So if we go and pass that through, so asterisk, asterisk tokens, this might throw an error. So what we're effectively doing is we're unpacking all of the stuff that we've got in here. So this is just a simpler way of passing through the input IDs as well as the attention mask. So when we go and create these tokens, we're actually getting two things back. So we're getting all of these input IDs, which are our actual tokens. And then we're getting this other thing called an attention mask, which basically specifies uh, where our specific attention is going to be directed when we're going and generating this text. But for now, just focus on these input IDs and know that all you need to do is unpack those tokens and pass it to our model and that will generate our summary. So let's actually take a look at that full line there. So I've written summary equals model dot generate. And then we're going and unpacking this dictionary of tokens. Hopefully we take a look at the type of our tokens. The type should be a dictionary. Uh, well, it looks like, so it's a specific class, but you can actually see that this looks like a dictionary. It's wrapped in our squiggly brackets. So by using our double asterisk, we're able to unpack that and pass it to this model.generate function. So the full line is summary equals model.generate, asterisk, asterisk, and then tokens. So it's unpacking that. Then the result that we're getting, so if I type in summary, is a number of tenses back. So this is effectively returning a separate set of ten tenses. So remember, we passed through some tenses as our input. What we're going to get back is our output tenses. Now this is actually the result or our summary. So if we actually go and decode this, we can actually see what our summary looks like. So if we go and write, so this is a summary in tenses, oh, actually in tokens, right? Now, right now that doesn't really represent very much to us because it's just a bunch of numbers. So what we can actually do is perform a decoding step to go and convert this back to words. Now we can use our tokenizer to do that. So let's actually go and do it. So tokenizer, or decode and then if we pass through our summary and we're going to extract so you can see that this is wrapped inside of two sets of square brackets so we've got a square bracket there there and we've got a second set of square brackets so it's actually uh, nested now what we need to do is just grab the first uh, instance of our result and this is going to give us our summary back so that's pretty cool right so this is decoding our summary so decode summary so let's just quickly take a look at the line that we wrote there. So I've written tokenizer.decode. And then what we're doing is we're grabbing this summary and effectively just grabbing the first value from that. So we're passing through this list rather than the nested list. Because remember, this is nested. You can see that it's got two sets of square brackets there. So we need to grab the first result, which is accessed by passing through zero or indexing zero. And then you've actually got the summary there. So this is pretty cool, right? So we've gone and passed through this big block of text over here. So Python is interpreted at a high, like basically what we've gone and copied from Wikipedia. And what we're getting out of that is Python is a programming language developed by Guido Van Rossum. How sick is that? So it's actually going and summarizing this big block of text. Now, if you actually like, this is the test that I always go and do to see how accurate this is actually, or how valid these results actually are. If I go and copy this text, can we actually go and find this within the existing body? You can see that it doesn't actually exist. So if I go and try to search through that, we don't actually have this sentence inside of this Wikipedia page. This is what abstractive summarization is all about. It is going and generating a new set of tokens or a new set of token sequences to be able to generate that summary. So it's completely generating a summary out of this big block of text that we're passing. So it's not just extracting one important sentence. It's going and generating those new sentences, which is so, so cool. So let's actually take a look at what we pass through. So we pass through Python is an interpreted high level general purpose programming language. It's design philosophy emphasizes code readability. Oh my God. Okay. So you can clearly see that with my short attention span, having something like this is super useful. 
So by passing through this big block of text, we're now generating this summary down here. So Python is a programming language developed by Guido Van Rossum. Let's try some other stuff. So um, what's another good example? Uh, let's type in machine learning. It's getting super meta as per usual. So if we copy this and paste it in, so we're going to replace this text. So again, this sort of shows you how you can update the pipeline. So if you wanted to go and, uh, I don't know, scrape a website and bring it in, all you need to do is replace what's inside of this text variable and the pipeline will still work. So if I go and pass this through, which is just the machine learning bits that we went and copied from Wikipedia into this text variable here. And if we go and run through the pipeline again, this is going to create our new tokens. So let's remove the type function there. So those are our new tokens. If we go and generate our summary, There is our new sentence. So it's gone and written. So machine learning is the study of computer algorithms that can improve automatically through experience and by the use of data. Is that in there? Looks like it's just gone and grabbed that first sentence. So machine learning is the study of computer algorithms that can improve automatically through experience and by the use of data. Okay, so not all that abstractive in that particular case. Let's go and try uh, another. But again, it's still gone and summarize it, right? Like that is probably a really good summary of what machine learning really is all about. Uh, let's go and grab a news article. So I don't know, Tesla robot. This is uh, obviously making the rounds at the moment. Uh, let's grab this one. So this is all about the Tesla robot or the Tesla bot that Tesla's just gone and announced or the Optimus robot. So if we go and copy this, paste it in. Again, I haven't gone and written or read any of this, so it'd be interesting to see what it generates. And let's go through our pipeline again. So that's created our tokens. That's generating our summary. And then it's going to go on ahead and decode it. How cool is that? So Tesla has announced plans to build a humanoid robot. Is it in this? Okay, let's, this is again the test. So let, let's actually see if this sentence is within this article. It isn't. See, how cool is that? That is abstractive summarization, right? So this is a pretty good summary of exactly what that article is about. So it's Tesla is has announced plans to build a humanoid robot. So again, if we go and try to search for this, I just want to make sure I'm not, uh, not pulling, the, pulling the covers over you. So you can see I've actually got that search query over there. So I've got this search over here and we're searching through the web page, it is not finding this, right? Let's just make sure that we can see some stuff. So again, the search is working. So Tesla has announced... How cool is that? So that is your abstractive summarization in a nutshell. What happens if we tried to summarize? Use Pegasus to go and try to summarize the Pegasus uh, paper. Let's go and find it. So Pegasus uh, machine learning paper. So it should be through ARXIV. All right, let's copy this. Oh, we can open up the PDF as well. As soon as that downloads, we'll be able to go and try to summarize. This is getting super meta, right? Almost like Inception up in here. So we're using Pegasus to summarize the Pegasus paper. You saw it here first. Wow, my internet is slow. Alrighty, come on, there we go. All right, so what we're going to do is copy the abstract and see what happens. Let's copy all of this, paste it in. So again, we're going to replace what's inside of our text and try doing that. So this is basically the abstract that we got from our Pegasus paper and we're throwing it inside of our text variable. So if we go and run this now, So let's see what it's gone and said. So pre-training NLP models with self-supervised objectives on large text corpora has shown great success when fine-tuned on downstream NLP tasks, including text summarization. I don't know if that is the best summary of what the Pegasus model is all about. And that looks like it might have actually just gone and taken a sentence. Let's have a look. 
So again, it's still gone and generated a new sentence or an abstract summary. Uh, let's try this with self-supervised objectives. Free training transformers. Still gone and generated a new sentence. It's almost like it summarized or paraphrased this first sentence here, which you can see there. So recent work pre-training transformers with self-supervised objectives on large text corpora has shown great success when fine-tuned. Pretty close. Now keep in mind that we're not using the model that's been fine-tuned on the PubMed model. So this might actually perform better if we actually use that model. But you can see that it is actively going and performing abstractive summarization which is absolutely super cool and we've done it in just a couple of lines of code as well now as per usual this code is going to be available via github below so let's quickly summarize and then wrap it up so remember we've gone through three key steps so we first up went and installed our dependencies we then went and imported and loaded our model we then went and performed our abstractive summarization and remember there's three key steps so we first create our tokens we then use our model to generate our new tokens or our summary, and then we can decode the tokens that we get back to be able to see our actual summary. So on that note, that about wraps it up. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, hit subscribe, and tick that bell. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.